गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वन सेकेंड रीजनल साइंस सेंटर भोपाल यूनिट ऑफ नेशनल काउंसिल ऑफ साइंस म्यूजियम इज बैक विद वन इम्पॉर्टेंट इवेंट एज वी ऑल नो दैट वेन एवर वी आर विजिटिंग सर्फिंग इंटरनेट और वी आर वॉचिंग टेलीविजन और न्यूज चैनल्स क्वाइट अ लॉट वी आर लिस्निंग हियरिंग अ लॉट अबाउट अ रिसेंट सेलेस्टियल ट्रेवलर a uh, messenger from the past i can say more precisely the comet uh, as we all know the comets are very important for our understanding about our own solar system how it came into being and how they can help us to better understand about our whole expansion evolution process and especially also in its star formation i hope i'll take a few questions while talking to these today's experts we are very honored to have two eminent experts from their respective fields so i'll introduce before introducing today's expert we would like to inform you please do visit regional science center bhopal we are open seven days into 363 days you can say seven into seven days in a week and we are all very much curious to show celestial beauty through our telescopes so every weekend we are organizing sky observation program as well other than our science galleries and other educational programs and we are gearing up for upcoming very important event and in the end of the month which is we, which we call national science day week celebration and this event is very important today because first february is the date when comet c 2022 e3 jtf it's a technical name and definitely more commonly um, in media or or on different websites it is being referred as a green comet because of its comas color so definitely today's experts will talk about it also why it has a, the uh, green color so it's very interesting and from bhopal people must be really curious to know from where they can observe and we have received so many telephonic call in our science center or we would like to inform you that if you want to observe using naked eye today's uh, magnitude of this comet is very much uh, in the range of uh, in the visibility of naked eye we can see it but for that we need complete dark sky sight for an example we also need to understand where it is located in the north in the night sky towards the north pole we are in which constellation for that we can use some of the apps because we are not used to it so anybody who is interested they can use any good uh, uh, applications like uh, sky map or stellarium or sky safari and search this comet c 2022 and that app will help you to point out using gps and then little bit you have to do a uh, rnt for your own and if you have binocular that would be great because it will add uh, well it would be a value addition to find out exactly like a point source but considering the current scenario in bhopal and nearby region due to climate uh recent monsoon uh, recent climatic change we have noticed that low lying sky is not very clear in the late evening and also there are clouds so possibility is again we may we may have clouds in, in the today's evening as well but let's not wait for these obstacles let's come out from our comfortable zone and try to observe because it completes though it is not completely a periodic na in nature but it is also taking 50000 years to complete a round so definitely before coming this time it has visited already 50000 years back if it is appropriately correct then that means that time civilizations on the planet earth or the life on planet earth was some completely different and now we are in the modern age we are very much aware about why they are very important and why they are very interesting object in our nice sky so without further ado on behalf of regional science center bhopal and our council national council of science museum which is a scientific non profits organization under the ministry of culture government of india we welcome today's guest from india's one of the premier astrophysics institute indian institute of astrophysics dr margarita sefonova hello ma'am Your mic is mute, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Hello. Thank yeah. you for inviting. Yeah. And we have today one more 
very important eminent expert from IAEA. He is having one more additional responsibility than doing astronomy and really astrophysics, making astronomy and astrophysics very much accessible to the larger mass through his Department of Science Communication and Outreach, Dr. Neeraj Ramanujam. Dr. Neeraj, you're welcome in today's program. Thank you, thanks, and thanks for having me uh, and Margarita Safanova from our Being from Science Center, really thankful to both of you for a accepting our request <coughs> on very short notice, uh, considering the time frame of the comment, <laughs> but the invitation was very, very short, and I'm, we are very thankful to you. So today's program is live on our YouTube channel, and we will take a few questions while talking to you from our live chat box, and uh, we will proceed. So before proceeding, I would like to introduce today's speaker for the audience. Dr. Margarita Safonova, she is very much curious to talk about Comet, but when you will read her work and experience, you will be surprised she is more engaged in many other areas of yeah. astrophysics as well. She was born in Russia. She has completed master's in chemistry from the Madeleine University of Chemical Technology in 1987, and also MSc in physics from Moscow State University, 1991, and PhD from India, from Delhi University. And after that, she worked in Cambridge, UK, Tehran, Iran, and other locations. And from 2006, she is working in Indian Institute of Astrophysics. And she is also a DST women scientist. And she has been working in various areas like gravitational lensing. That's a very important area. And in fact, for that, you know, gravitational physics uh, is becoming more and more popular. And this is one area ma'am can talk if she is having time in this program, if we will find any question. And also UV astronomy from space and near space, exoplanet, which we also call extra solar planet. The planets which are not in our solar system, they are having their own star. And so far we have crossed 4,000 such potential. 5,000. 5,000. 5,000, ma'am. Thanks for, uh, for adding one more, 1,000. Potentially confirmed candidates. They are not like the Earth, but we are trying to search like the Earth. They are very, very close to the Jupiter kind of planets. Ma'am may talk separately, may may invite about such subject. Another expert, Dr. Neeraj Mohan Ramanujam, he is really responsible for taking astronomy to the public through IA Bangalore's outreach department. He has worked in radio astronomy. He also worked in, during his postdoctoral fellowship in various countries in France and Netherlands. In fact, LOFAR is a project, very important project. He worked on LOFAR. Sir can tell a little bit about uh, his own involvement in this area. He also worked, India is one of the premier institutions involved in radio astronomy. Why we are talking and introducing these facilities? Because students should understand what they are exactly. National Center for Radio Astrophysics, GMRT, Giant Meter Wave Radio radio telescope in uh, Maharashtra, that is near Pune Na in Naran Gaon. So I also worked in that field. And he was also commissioning scientist for almost two years for a very important prestigious project of India, which we call a square kilometer area. It's international collaboration. India is also part of that. And uh, now he's taking care, big responsibility because of his communication of science and outreach. He also received very important award, ASI Anjit Kembhavi Award for Public Outreach. So without further ado, I will open this di dialogue and discussion, I can say, uh, with the forum, with including our speaker. So I will ask Dr. Margita, ma'am, please take on from here, introduce uh, your own experience, your involvement, and how do you really exactly think that why comets are very important or such celestial bodies for our better understanding of solar system, then I'll go to Dr. Neeraj. So now, Dr. Margarita, please, ma'am. Uh, hello. Uh, so yes, uh, I'm. I haven't even actually started observing the comets. I was observing uh, global clusters and all the rest uh, about uh, micro lensing, gravitational lensing events. But um, what actually stimulated me to start uh, looking into comets was. Um, in 2013, uh, there was a, a very global, very large global campaign about comet Ison. The comet was discovered and it was supposed to have come very close to, to the sun and become very bright. Uh, and uh, we started observing it right from January 2013 till November 2013. 
So we were observing it every every uh, month, and uh, we got the movies, uh, how they move, and I say, I got kind of I, you can say I fell in love with comets. <laughs> Actually, uh, comets fascinated uh, humanity since time immemorial. Actually, has anyone know? Uh, does anyone know how the comet? Why the name we call them comet? It was uh, the word comet comes from ancient Greek, and which means something with long hair or let's say hairy. So it means that uh, even ancient Greeks saw so very long comets with huge tails and a head. So, and that's why they, they look like a head and a tail and, and a long hair. So that's why they're called cometas. So all this comes from the word cometas, comet. So that's how we call them. And um, apart from uh, once comets were even called at some point uh, cats of the sky, because comets behave like cats. They have tails and they behave any any time any any way they want. <laughs> so actually, we have in our solar system we have lots of comets. On average, it's about two hundred crore of comets around the Earth. And every time in the sky, though we cannot we may not see them with the naked eye, but every time in the sky, it's between hundred and thousand comets there present. If you have a tele good telescope, you can observe observe them. There are good uh, links and websites uh, from where you can, for example, one, one website says uh, visual comets in the, in the future or at present in Northern Hemisphere. And these links and uh, websites I, I'll be happy to share uh, with Saket. Yeah, and uh, he, he can provide you anyone who is interested. So uh, that is how it started. So we observed this comet as it was coming close and close and it grew in size. And uh, actually it came so close to the sun that it got destroyed by the sun. The sun just tear, tore it apart. But that is also a very interesting point of view from physics, why it happened. So what are the comets? Uh, since I'm a physicist or astrophysicist, this is very interesting to me, how the comets behave uh, why they behave the way they behave, and uh, from the that is from physics point of view. That is why I even uh, physics, of course, is part of mathematics, is part of physics. So I've even written a book, small book, mathematical fun with comets, and uh, using this book, uh, problems with solutions, and using this book, you can even I supply I can supply the images of that comet, Ison. And uh, you, readers can calculate the, themselves the physical spe uh, speed of comet in space as it was coming closer from January, between January, February, May, October. They can verify that comet was, the speed was increasing and how much was it. So using just the images, it is all possible to do. Um, so coming, um, coming back to the uh, comet, the topic of today. Yes, I was observing on our telescope, in, which is in Himalayas, Hanle, Lei, uh, and uh, on 2nd uh, January this year, and exactly at that time, the news have come that there is a new comet coming, which may be visible with the naked eye. And it very, it's kind of a call to all astronomers to go observe it, because we need to know the orbit. To know the orbit of the comet, to calculate the precise orbit of the comet, we need observations from different locations on the Earth. The more observations we do, the more observations we supply, the more precise the comet can be calculated. So that is why uh, we observed this comet. And um, it uh, really, it is called Green Comet now because when combined, Images that we observe through the telescope are black and white. Uh, I don't know if I can share my screen and show it. Can I do that? Yes, ma'am. Please, please. So uh, just as an introduction, uh, we have the website of our institute has a website. On the website, there is an outreach page. And on the outreach page, there is astronomical events. 
Yeah, I'm well, sending the page detail in YouTube chat box also. Now, okay, yes. this link for the audience. So this is uh, where I put all my comments starting from Izon. <laughs> Here, for example, coming that 2013 comment Izon images. As you can see, in January it was tiny. In February it grew a little bit more. Uh, and, Margarita, and... would you want to share your screen? It's not shared yet. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. One second. <clears throat> I, I thought uh, uh -huh. I am sharing my screen now. Yes. Okay. So this is our website, our Indian Institute of Astrophysics Outreach Astronomical Events. And here I put images of my comets. And here is the images of that comet that stimulated my interest in comets to begin with. So as you can see, anyone can see that in January 2013, it was tiny. In February, it, it has bigger tail. Then tail in May grew even bigger. And in September, it was already this much. And in October, it, it became very long tail. And finally, in December, it was destroyed by the sun. It came too close to the sun. Using these images, we can even make the movies. So this is the movie of the comet as, as it moves in January. This is how it moves in February and so on. So this time, so this, anyone can go and look at different comets taken over uh, last several years. But now coming to our green comet, which has a name uh, C, C means C, uh, minor planet center uh, designates comets by the specific names. So C means it's a periodic comet. 2022, it was discovered in 2022. And E3 is a, its numerical number. ZTF, it was discovered by Zwicky Transient Facility, which is located in California. And when they observed it, they calculated the period, its period, it's a periodic comet of 50,000 years. So as jokingly was written on different website, Neanderthals were the last to see it. And in December 22, it was called the comet of the month as it was expected to continue brightening and become visible in February, which is today, tonight, tomorrow. It means it is closest to the, to, to the earth. It has passed its perihelion on 12th January at 1 AU from the sun. One astronomical unit is exactly where we are. And it right now it is as close to Earth at 0 .2 0 0.2.8 ast astronomical units. So when now coming to the observations, actual observations, actual photographs. So when we observe the comet through the telescope, we ob observe it in monochromatic light, but we observe it through the different filters. Different filters pass different section of the visible light. For example, this on the left is a B band. B means blue. Then we observe in V band, visual, and R band means red. It's closer to the infrared. So when we do combine them, Maybe people must have heard about RGB. We, we obtain the true color, which is called red, green, blue, RGB. So for this, we have to combine all these three. And this is what we obtain. So this is uh, why it is called green. Because if you, we, we were able to see it with the naked eye, not through the telescope, then we would see it green. It's, it's coma. This is what is called coma, the head. Also, coma comes also from the, uh, the word coma comes from Greek, come. Cometus means long hair and coma means head, head which has long hair. So here, I would like to also pay attention, uh, attract people's attention to that why, as you can, as we can see, there is a tail, but there is something to the left of the tail. That's another tail. So yes, comets have two tails. Usually comets are essentially, what are the comets? Essentially comets are rocks, which are on which on the nucleus is a ro generally a rock. And uh, there is a lot of ice, water ice and other gases ices. 
like CO2 ice, acetylene ice, even ammonia ice, which because comet live very far away from the sun, mostly what is called Oort cloud or Jupiter family. There are two dwelling places of comets uh, in our solar system, ma main comets, which is an Oort cloud, which is very far away from the uh, sun and what is called Jupiter belt, which are between Mars and Jupiter. So comets between Mars and Jupiter come very often to, to this, uh, they're called very short periodic comets. Like there is one comet which comes every three years, NK. <laughs> and comets will live in Oort cloud, come very rarely, maybe only once, or like this one every 50,000 years or something like this. So this, when it comes closer to the sun, it gets heat up and starts evaporating. And so since comets are, essentially what is called icy dirt balls or dirty ice balls. So they have dust and they have ice and they have water and they have hydrogen and they have carbon. So what is yellow here is mostly dust because dust reflects the sunlight. And that is why we can see it. What is straight here is hydrogen ions because, uh, and hydrogen ions, reflect the exactly uh, directed opposite to the sunlight. Sunlight uh, dissociates the molecules. Sunlight is very powerful and it creates what is called ion tail. So yellow is a dust tail and this straight tail is called the ion tail. So because ion, ions are much lighter than the dust particles, they follow directly away from the solar wind while dust tail follows the orbital direction of the comet. So it's much heavier. So it is following the orbit. Okay, so what are the other question could be, if I can help yeah. answering? I'll come to you. I'll come to you, ma'am. So now I'll move to Dr. Neeraj Mohan. And I will- Okay, I'll stop sharing. Yeah, yeah please. Stop. Yeah. Uh, hey, Dr. Mohan, please uh, share your experience about uh, Comet and their importance, and why they are very crucial in our better understanding uh, our own formation of our own solar system. And how do you see such opportunities can be utilized to inspire younger generation, especially school students and teachers? Thanks, thanks, Sake. Uh, comets are, of course, useful to understand the solar system origin and evolution. But I think primarily they are fun to look at and and you know and and think everybody loves to see them and that's I think the important thing. Uh, I myself, for example, I think when I was in school in, in eighty six, I had chance to go to Kavur Observatory to see the Halley's comet at that time, and then I was you know, and I was very very uh, amazed with what I saw. Uh, and I think the next big comet I saw was during my masters, uh, where I was living in a in a town with very uh, less light pollution, and I saw comet Kyakuta I don't know if Margarita remembers seeing. Comet Yakuta came in, in uh, 95. The tail, the tail, I could see the, the naked eye, the tail was over 90 degrees uh, long, right? With the naked eyes, because it was a very really dark sight, and that was amazing. Uh, and I think many people also, I think Margarita might remember in 92, there was this very, very famous comet called Shoemaker Levy 9, which had yes. broken up, uh, uh, which was, which, was uh, which came towards Jupiter. Jupiter had attracted it towards itself and was going to fall into Jupiter. And Jupiter's gravity tidal forces had pulled the comet apart into multiple objects. And roughly every day, one 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 of one part of the comet would hit Jupiter, right? And it would hit them. I remember it would hit them just behind the visible limb of Jupiter. And therefore, it would hit. And then roughly half an hour after that, you would see the spot because it turned towards the Earth. And I remember, you know, being in the terrace of uh, one of the famous amateur astronomers of India, uh, P. Devadas in Chennai. Uh, but the tennis is going to wait half for half an hour, and then as it turned, you start seeing the black spot of where the impact was and so on. So fascinating, right? Uh, it was extremely fascinating. And of course, like and of course, in 2013, we had this comet Ison, which was which we which people thought would become a very bright comet if it had survived a perihelion or when it goes closest to the sun, because it went very, very close to the sun. Unfortunately, as Margita said, it did not survive perihelion. Uh, but in the process, we had a lot of the amateur astronomers, outreach, uh, astronomy outreach people, science communicators in India had started a huge campaign uh, before perihelion uh, 
as an in uh, uh, in case the comet did become very bright at to the naked eye so we had for, we had a huge campaign we had made a lot of resource material posters ppts videos in preparation in multiple languages i think margaret was a part of that as well and i was a part of that too so that was very interesting because you know we kind of we had i think we had around 300 or 400 regional camps training camps before perihelion across the country and so on uh, as a part of uh, a huge collaboration and unfortunately the comet did not uh, survive but then i think uh, but i think uh, the education and outreach done during that a uh, project where we said look we do not know if the comet will survive perihelion let's all look at it let's all see what happens because science doesn't have all the answers and uh, let's all together see what happens and see if it survives and i, I think there was a very interesting exercise which was done uh, over hundreds of places in india with schools especially school students in rural areas and that i think was a big success in spite of the comet not being visible uh, <clears throat> since later of course there were many comets Uh, we haven't had a really, really bright comet since I think Kyakutake or Hale Bob, unfortunately. Uh, and E three was supposed to be uh, supposed to become much brighter than it is now, but then you know that's how that's how it is. Uh, like like she said, comets are like acid does they do whatever they want to. And you know, and whether comets are going to be bright and visible to the naked eye is something we all of us keep hoping every time we see one. And that that that's part of the game, right? Uh, comets are interesting because historically they always captivated human time, right? Because For long, for many many centuries, we do not know what they were. Some people thought it was something in our own atmosphere. Some people thought it brought bad luck. Some people thought, uh, you know, it would destroy life on Earth and so on. There are many examples of many cultures where comets were seen as bad omens. In India, it wasn't really so. I think in India, mostly they were not seen as bad omens. They, for most part, just ignored uh, for many years. Though people like Varaha Mira, etc., had talked about comets. Varaha Mira famously said that because comets move, uh, are, are move very fast. And they move in different. Varaha Mira, for example, knew that you could not predict the comets' rise and set times like they could for planets because it moved every day, right? So people knew that there was something different about comets. Uh, famously, uh, the first time people anybody used a telescope from India was Father Ritzvika uh, in Goa, and I think one of the first observations he made was of a comet in the 1600s. Uh, Emperor Jahangir of the Mughal Empire very famously saw two comets of his own. Uh, and wrote about it in his in his book and so on. So there is a there is a lot of history uh, and culture associated with comets uh, in India and abroad. And of course, Halley's comet is very very famous, uh, partly because it comes every seven to six years, but also partly because Halley's comet was one of the uh, successes or the triumphs of Newtonian gravity and Newton mechanics, where Halley could show that these comets, which seem to be completely different objects which are known, were actually orbiting orbiting the sun and and using Newtonian Mechanics and gravity and Newtonian gravitational theory. He could show that this this particular comet, the Halley's comet, was actually a periodic visitor. And he said, "Look, all these comets we saw before were actually the same comet." And and being able to do that calculation using Newtonian theory was a huge success. And in fact, he could predict the comet's next return, and that, that was seen as a huge triumph of Newtonian theory, which is you no, know, which is historically very important if you look at the progress of science itself, right? Uh, and of course, comets we you know were were uh, formed very very long ago. Uh, along with the protoplanetary disk, which formed the solar system around four and a half billion years ago, and and a lot of comets which are far away have retained the chemical composition from that time, right? And therefore, it's very important to study comets because, in some sense, we have some a, a preserved fossil or archaeological record of the protoplanetary disk when it cooled around four and a half billion years ago, and we also know that certain when the comets formed, some of them migrated outwards, some of them formed where they were. And uh, and so on, and therefore a lot of lot of uh, complexity to studying comets. Comets, like Marketa Safanova said, come when they come to close to the Earth. This was green, which is visible. Our eyes are more sensitive to green. That is why it's called visual. And this is red. So when we combine this, stars do not merge because they shifted. But the comet. Acquires its true color, what we call true color. So, 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 so basically, uh, since you are tracking the comet with a telescope, yes, uh, and the comet is moving very fast with respect very to stars. Fast. Since you're tracking the comet, the stars will seem to move uh, in relation to the comet, right? Yes. And since you're taking so, the three x three filter exposures at different times, you're catching the star moving through the. For this, uh, we need a special like here. For example, we also did mm. short exposures, but it is possible to take uh, like here. 
this was this interstellar comet was actually tracked by the telescope. That is why stars not just combined, but they're just stretched yeah. into lines. And the longer we take, the more uh, stretches will be. And in okay. fact, uh, historically, that's how you people discovered asteroids and comets, right? So they knew yes, where exactly. the stars are. Exactly. You look exactly. at you look at it, a telescope today. Look at it tomorrow. Look at it day after. And you see one of them. One of the points has moved slightly. One of those stars is moving else, right? between the frames. Yes. yes and yes, then aha, yes. that's a, a comet or asteroid. That's how you exactly. discover it. You know? Exactly. Uh, it's right. either comet or asteroid. Yes. Even this one was discovered the same way by the ZTF. Right? You take, yeah, and it was believed that time. it is an asteroid. Originally, it was built mm. because it was so far away that the, you couldn't see the tail. The tail was not there yet. It was yeah. discovered, actually, it was beyond Saturn, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah, so initially they thought, and the only when it came closer to the sun and the coma started developing, people realized it's actually a comet. Right? I want to specify that comets are all different. Like, for example, this comet is not so green. It's more like into bluish with the but tails usually are red or more like yellow because mm. tails are dust. Dust particles reflect solar, solar light and our solar light is yellow. But blue here in this particular comet comes from the special chemical compound which is called C2, di dicarbon. It, it is believed that this comet has acetylene ice. Mm. When solar, solar photons heat it, they dissociate Carbon uh, re remains here around, and hydrogen gets sw swept away by the uh, solar um, pressure of the solar uh, wind. While then, uh, you would ask, then, yeah, okay. Okay, I just want to say that you would ask, why not tail is not green? Because, and it is also actually proved uh, it, it is calculated that the tail is not green because this C2 carbon, uh, diacarbon, is very short-lived. It recombinates very quickly with other molecules. And that is why it is not shown here. It's only around the coma, only around the head, that it will be green. Uh, you want to That's take questions now, Sake? Wanted to add. From the audience? Okay. okay. <laughs> sorry sorry yes yes Uh, yes, actually, um, in this this sense, I would like to share my screen again quickly. Yes, and uh, because I have presentations made about comets, I have popular talks uh, which I've given about comets, and here I would like to show that this is where we live. 
So here is the sun, and the third one is the earth, and here is heliopause and all the stuff that is around us. So, so an old cloud. So, so here is earth. This is our hydrogen wall and old cloud, which is very far away. And old cloud is believed to, to have contain more like billions or even up to trillion of comets. So what happens is that uh, though their Oort cloud is believed to be spherical and it, it is, uh, they move there, but since we are moving through the interstellar, we are not sitting uh, in, in one place in the universe. We actually move around the, uh, between the stars, we move around our galaxy and there is interstellar wind and there are stars outside that produce their own stellar wind. There is just interstellar wind, there are bow shocks. So all this produces perturbations, gravitational perturbations to this nice spherical uh, Oort cloud. And it kind of kicks out the comets into the, it kicks them out also, but then we lose them. But some, some of them, they come to the sun. So this is how some of the comets will uh, come close and some comets will, 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 are getting lost. But as I said, we need to know the velocity and, and the orbit. From precise calculations of the orbit and the velocity, we can estimate whether this comet is from Kuiper Belt or it is from Oort Cloud. And whether it will come back again, or it will, it is lost forever. Okay, so ma'am, uh, I would like to uh, inform you all that we have audience uh, from different class backgrounds, even uh, middle school students, high school students, in our chat box, and uh, from different schools. So the, basically, they are more eager to know uh, from where they can see. But before that. Uh, if you want to tell about your book and the uh, mathematical fun yes, about yes. comet, so that was this was this would be very useful for them being a student. So please go ahead. Ma'am. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, what I wanted to say again about this book that I've written, the second author, my co-author, is actually was at that time actually 11th grade student. He was attending the uh, workshop, the the popular science talks on, on asteroids and comets, and he was very interested in it. And I invited him to participate, and we wrote this book together. He, and by, by the way, he now is a student of MIT. He nearly finished, and he is going into PhD, to do PhD. So he is a very bright guy. But he was a school student who was so interested in this comet Ison and comets in general that he wanted to work with me. And he, we, we produced this nice book, which is, will be available. And uh, here I write about interstellar comet, about general mathematical problems with comet, why, why it is actually mathematical fun, and how much mass, for example, comets are least, how much mass comet lose, because we know that comets evaporate, they expel all this gas. And uh, as anyone might know about the meteor showers, these meteor showers are actually remnants of comets that Earth on its orbit passes through. This actually, we're going through tails of those big comets. Every few months, every, every other month, there is some or another meteor shower. And uh, so this is what uh, this book is about. And anyone is welcome to this book. And I, pre uh, I can send the images. And you can calculate the speed of the comet yourself, in actual physical speed of the comet using just the images. So you can do what we astronomers do. You can see how do we do it. Okay, that's a really important uh, perspective. And actually, uh, somebody is interested to... Forget you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. you know, yeah. In technical care, sometimes you have to act as a host also. Sometimes you are also handling live streaming in emergency situation. <laughs> so this is how technology is really being taught because of the circumstances. 
but interesting part ma'am uh, whoever is interested to know more about <coughs> your work or indian institute of astrophysics uh, outreach initiative so i can now ask dr mohan uh, dr neeraj please uh, talk about your uh, little bit about your department and your, your outreach initiatives and then we will come to the questions because students have mentioned their name their class their schools but not too many different different uh, questions they are they must be putting yeah. their so I, 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 I think uh, everybody on youtube uh, if you if you have any questions or things you want us to comment on just uh, just write them on the youtube chat uh, we'll give preference to questions which are related to comments and the questions are not about comments we will take uh, if there is time uh thank thanks aket so uh, we are both from the indian institute of astrophysics in bangalore maybe i'll tell you a little bit about it because it might be new to people in bhopal and, and nearby areas uh, uh it this is a research institution uh, in india it's headquartered in bangalore and uh, it it traces its origins back to the madras observatory which was established uh, in some form in 1786 so we're more than 200 years old in that sense uh after metas observatory was started in 1786 it was moved to kodaikanal in 1899 and the kodaikanal observatory later became what we now know as indian institute of physics so it's it's we are a very old institution started during the british times <laughs> uh and uh, so we run around we have we were on many observatories across the country and uh, the one of the famous ones is in ladakh which is what uh, margaret sarpana had observed the comet from uh, this is in a place called hanle which is uh, around 5 uh, uh, hours drive from there it is a very very remote area near the border and uh, that that we have optical and infrared telescopes there as well as gamma ray and co telescope we also have a, a more than 55 year old observatory in kavalur uh, which is uh, in tamil nadu near paniyambadi and that is called the vaidu vappu observatory we also have the kodaikanal solar observatory of course which is more than 100 years old we have a radio observatory in gorividnor which is around which is very close to bangalore and we also have a instrument development facility uh, in hoskote which is near bangalore which is where margaret has got to go tonight to observe remotely from from ladakh uh, so i am myself from a section called the scope section which was started around a year ago in, in our institute scope stands for science communication public outreach and education and we have one of us here uh, uh, With with many interns, and we also work with faculty like Margarita, who are very interested in outreach, and we've been doing it for uh, many years. Uh, so our aim is to kind of make astronomy uh, uh, more popular in the public domain, and as well as to spread uh, spread information about what happens in IIE. People people wonder what do astronomers do all day and all night, and what and 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 why are we employing them. And I think part of what we do here is to kind of let people know what it is we do here. and what are the science you produce and and why is it important and so on uh, we have programs for schools and colleges mainly they've been online because of the pandemic and now we started doing in person events we of course know where near bhopal but then uh, but then if if people from madhya pradesh go to kodaikanal or near kavalur or or lay or anywhere or privately on tourism uh, they they will be able to visit our observatories uh, after applying prior prior permission so you can apply through a form which is on our website and uh, and we invite you to come visit our observatories we also have internship programs for uh, bsc and msc students in physics as well as engineering college students who are doing be or btech uh, the information is on our website so we take interns we take summer students we take winter students uh, and and with uh, summer and winter uh, core students we also have of course a vibrant phd program is open to people with an msc or a be uh, we also have an integrated mtech phd program which is on instrumentation uh, and and so i encourage you all to look at the website once you finish school once you are in undergraduate courses to look at the website and, and see what we have to offer uh, outreach itself since we've been doing a lot of online activities in the last two two and a half years they all on youtube so you can search for our youtube channel is called ia bengaluru and there are a lot of public talks and discussion sessions online which you can which are free to view not only online not only online offline like Sunday, this Sunday there was offline. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so we have now started to do offline events. But then you can find a lot of our talk or public talks we organized the last three years on our YouTube channel. And notably, some uh, many of them are in other languages. So we have, I think, two or three talks in Hindi, which might be useful to uh, students in in Madhya Pradesh, for example. We have talks in Gujarati, Tamil. Kannada, Telugu, Malayalam, uh, 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 Bengali, etc. So uh, a few of them, though majority are in English. So we encourage you to look at that. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook uh, and Instagram uh, to get to know more information. We regularly post stuff there. 
so follow us and and get to know more and if you visit any of the cities where you can observatory you're very welcome to uh, uh, join us thank you uh, so i think i'll stop there of course now we started to do more in person events but those are of course in bangalore or near our field stations so they're not outside okay. so recently though for people in bhopal i should say that we were in bhopal i was in bhopal recently uh, two weeks ago because we had put up a stall at the india international science festival which was happening in the manet uh, campus so i hope some of you who are here on youtube had visited our stall Uh, if not, of course, in Osaka, it is there. The Science Center, the Sari Bhat Foundation, Gopal, and so on. I encourage you to go see them as well. Yeah, I think I stop there, and we can maybe take questions. Yeah. So questions are really not specific to the comet because they must have understood the talk and very beautifully, uh, Dr. Margarita covered the very important aspects of comet, and especially even though about this green comet C twenty twenty two E three J T F. So for the clarity or for better understanding about uh, comet, I will ask a few. one or two questions then we will try to wrap up this program ma'am just let me know how we discover how do we discover such comets and also little bit uh, talk about jtf because this is being very very popular about and contributing a lot about such uh, discoveries juiki transient facility and also as uh, we being a uh, part of our indian soil and uh, our technology our own astronomical setup himalayan chandra telescope you have used uh, quite a lot for capturing many comets including this one so how we do do that so that student can understand observing using professional astronomical telescopes and capturing using normal dslr camera or observing using telescope or maybe binoculars how we can achieve this goal okay uh, for this i would like to quickly share my screen because it is a very like uh, nirish said when we astronomers observe something we just observe yes we observe our but sometimes so this is a presentation that done by my project student from christ so i observed the global cluster and then i discovered as i flip the frames that there is something moving there so the, and in several of the of the images it was happening so at that time shrikant wanted uh, some project and i said why don't you take care of this and what he said what he did uh, i quickly go so this was a global cluster and here he identified that there are several shifting objects they're moving across the frame oh okay sorry it's a bit complicated but uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway so sorry about that but what happened is that he actually detected um something or sometimes we have even funnier things we have something like this this is observed field this was a chiron and this is something moving like this during the exposure time so obviously it can be a star it is not a satellite this satellite frames are usually very straight so it must be either comet or meteorite or something like this or meteor or asteroid but uh, when we move closer we can see something like this something like this so it is rotating something rotates and shines reflects the solar light and then it is dark and then it rotates again so this is what we do uh, we investigate so actually very often uh, astronomers job is like investigations what is it what is it is it a comet is it a asteroid is it something else so that is how we find and uh, our uh, how people how astronomers detect moving objects okay. because they move very fast and they move across the frames and then you start investigating and this is a detective work okay dr mohan is helping me to ask questions from the audience also i want to add one thing to what she said uh, i think a lot of the uh, people here on youtube would know about citizen science projects there are many of them and i think many of people here have been a part of them of course the a famous one is the international asteroid search campaign but i want to highlight in this context a uh, 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 citizens project whose url i put on the chat window called uh, sungrazer 
So there is a satellite called SOHO in space. Uh, it's a NASA satellite, which uh, I think, which, which which looks at the sun, right? So it it looks at the sun all the time, and the way it, and it looks at the solar corona. So the way it does it is that at the focal plane of 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 the telescope, it 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 has a uh, block. It has something which blocks the actual sun's disk itself, and then you can you can image the the very very faint atmosphere of the sun around it, which is called the corona. Okay, and now. In, in this, you can see that, uh, so we, we can see comets when they are far away in the sky or, or very bright and so on, but there are a lot of very small comets which keep coming in all the time, okay? And they're very, very small and then they're, and they're very faint and they go very close to the sun, right? And you cannot see them because they're very close and they go, they're like very, very fast. So what, so Soho was there to observe the sun, but what it also ends up doing because it blocks the central part, the sun's disk itself, is it discovers many, many comets uh, because it can observe the faint atmosphere around the sun, right? Okay. I discovered a few thousand comets like this. And there is a design project called Sun Grazer, where all the SOHO data is put up, and you, uh, as a student, can look at the data, and you can try and identify comets, and you can mark them, right? So so that's something which will be interesting to audience, especially the school students. Uh, the, it's called Sun Grazer, and I put the URL uh, on the YouTube chat box. And uh, you can go and contribute yourself. And if you look at the main first Im the image on the on on it, you can see at least like some six seven comets trying to fall into the sun, right? And and this is a lot of fun. So I I I, I do urge some of the students to go look at this website and see if you wanna yeah. help us. Yeah, and I wanted to add uh, a bit more. So what we do also astronomers, uh, we use something which is called image subtraction. So when we do the image subtraction, that is the clearest way. So here, this the global cluster that uh, I uh, my student was global cluster for the students for for the easy easy to understand group of yes. thousands and thousands so, of stars like a cluster in a very close yeah. space. So, yeah, billions yeah. of stars, very very tightly packed. Yeah. So and since I take the exposures of the same field over the night. To, to find out the variable stars and so on so some and then i do the subtraction i subtract all those images when the stars go away but something as you can see is moving so this is an asteroid <laughs> yeah that my student discovered okay fantastic so there are always so many uh, opportunities to learn even your subtraction yes. process can help you to understand which is moving. And this is the very important point, which is uh, added by Dr. Mo, uh, Neeraj, that uh, we can use that uh, citizen science data mm. link of so, because actually yeah. I also observed many times that you, because of this coronal disk, and uh, when it's obstructing the main sun, so it is really giving more opportunity to actually see what type of objects are coming towards the sun. And, uh, and in fact, even the comet I saw in 2013 that Margarita and I had mentioned before, when it went very close to the sun, the only way to track it was through the SOHO and uh, SOHO images. And as you, yeah. So, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, just a little bit, and while going back. We couldn't observe close to the sun. Our telescope doesn't allow. It's sun is yeah. so, so, SOHO was so covering the sun's disk. So, SOHO does yeah, the for, the clarity, way, you know? for the clarity of the students, <laughs> for the clarity, uh, we would like to inform you that SOHO or any solar observatories, are capable to observe sun, those observatories can be used for putting occultism, occultism disk to do these things. But actually for other optical telescopes or any other telescopes are not, not advised to see you cannot, the sun. You cannot look at that close to the sun. Without proper way. filter. Okay, so in the last, just so because students are introducing, they are from Carmel School, they are from DPS, they are from uh, different uh, the, uh, schools, uh, Kendri Vidyalaya schools and Different schools, but everybody is but trying to them, introduce. I want them to ask. I want them to post questions about comets. Uh, I've asked. I see questions about acid rain and so on, but not about comets. <laughs> so, uh, so one thing. Uh, uh, do you have any idea or any? Would you like to add? Recently, uh, not very long back, uh, in 2015-16 period, European Space Agency's uh, Rosetta mission actually uh, flyby was doing flyby about the comet 67 CP. That was the yes. comet, and they also uh, tried very effectively to land their lander, Philly lander. Due to some technical glitch, it landed, but uh, not uh, as expected. So, why such missions are not many? 
that's my question and, say, and the second thing as dr neeraj has meant, already mentioned it's very complicated field very complex area of research as well so why we are not planning any space missions for such potential candidates which can be very useful for our better understanding because they are the remnant of early or early leftover of solar system formation no actually uh, i want to just say that it landed it landed successfully but but due to technical radio communication no, we lost no, no. I i'll tell you what happened huh. we we do not know exactly the uh, surface what the composition of the surface so it turned out to be that the surface was more much more bouncy than we predicted it was not a solid okay. complete solid so this this uh, this um set of, uh, this lander psyche it actually bounced so hard that it bounced several times and finally it landed in in the cave okay because the surface of the uh, uh, comet is has a uh, caves and it is uh, eruptions just like in the movie <laughs> that we know we yeah. know very well very good we were so, we were very much part of uh, we were watching from our nehru science center mumbai we had a program with european space agency mm -hmm. in mumbai at that point in time so in fact, in fact, in fact uh, it actually had captured an eruption on the comet before it went very close. Close. And like she said, it landed. It kind of got wedged somewhere, right? And its battery also at some point. It bounced out. several times. It bounced it got several times. Also in the process. Into a cave. Yeah. In the cave. Yes. Okay. There are photographs yeah, of it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so deep impact. These are difficult, right? These are very difficult. And imagine, I mean, the comet is so the comet surface is so small. It's moving extremely fast. And then you're going to land something on it, or even even go near it. It's an orbit. It's it's not it's not easy. Exactly and not only that, the exactly. The and, and and you need to plan years. You have to plan years in advance. Now, not many comets you can plan years in advance for, which are interesting also, right? You, like this comet was discovered last year, right? And 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 therefore you can't say, oh, a comet is coming in three months. They like, get something done. So it's also difficult to plan ahead for all of these reasons. <laughs> That's true. Uh, for a space but then, but then we, we all landed on comets. We landed on asteroids and so on. So uh, I think uh, using more of the uh, yes, yeah. like DART was DART, DART, DART experiment exactly. was very really successful. Yeah. yeah, DART was DART was also was, was a great great example of yes. of hitting something moving fast, and very very, very small, very far away. Right? Changing the trajectory, very successfully changing the trajectory. DART yes. Yeah. yeah. It is going on. If I'm correct, this mission is not over at DART mission. No, no. So DART was the first attempt. So now they'll they'll do more tests and so on. So so it is a very difficult uh, thing to do because the comet is moving very fast. It, it's outgassing a lot. It's it's uh, you know you're not sure about its surface uh, whether it's dusty, rocky, uh, icy, etc. And and you need to plan your your experiment really quickly because you don't get too much advance notice of these really interesting long period comets, right? So it's 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 not easy, but then I think uh, I think so far they've been very exciting. Uh, we they even gotten back some they have even gotten gas from the coma on a flyby and analyzed it. Right. So I think more more will be planned as we go along. Uh, it is why the interstellar object, as you might know, the the, the one that was called Oumuyamuyamu. Om, I can't Oumuamua. pronounce. Ah, Oumuamua. Oumuamua. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah. So now it is believed that it was actually a comet. Okay. Yeah. And not so, an, so, an asteroid. Okay. If I'm correct, so that, 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 that is that is a gray line between. Yeah, yeah. If I'm correct, when it was discovered last year, if earlier it, they believed that it is actually a asteroid, but later on, as it got brightened enough, then they came to know it is not a asteroid, it is a comet, and coming from very far, then precisely calculated the orbit, and later on we are following it. Yeah, that's. It, it turned out to be uh, interstellar. Uh, <laughs> In the stellar object, mm -hmm. and uh, why it is believed that it is a comet because its orbit was not following the rigid orbit of asteroid. Mm -hmm. It means it was producing gas okay. jets, okay. and that we believe only comets do when they uh, evaporate. So these evaporation jets they change the trajectory. So I think I just want. I just want. To, thank yeah. you. Yeah, please. I just want to end with one thing. Uh, I think we are ending. We are ending. Uh, we are. Yeah. So I just want to end with one thing. I think. The reason comets are interesting among everything else we, we talked about today 
is that uh, you don't know when one is going to appear and become very very bright right uh, most astronomical objects you know you can predict you can predict when a planet is going to go near on the planet in the sky or when, when a meteor shower happens or what moon is going to do sun is going to do and so on at least for the at least for the amateur astronomers the naked eye objects right but comets are special because you know tomorrow you know tomorrow somebody might discover a new comet coming in a long wave comet which might become extremely bright in a year from now we don't know right and and, and the fact that you can't predict it and that it could happen uh, is i think very exciting and that's something very nice about comets for the public that uh, that these are un- that many of them are unpredictable and you don't know when one is going to come and you never know when one is going to become really bright and big and, and glorious in the sky so so let's keep hoping okay so on this note i am really thankful to both of you dr margarita you are uh, you know phenomenal explainer fantastic teacher Thank dr you. mohan you, uh, dr mohan i should say dr neeraj uh, you have explained very beautifully and i think this conversation which was a hybrid in, in nature we were talking chatting and also madam was presenting her own uh, work by using himalayan chandra telescope and uh, i think this program may be useful to students to understand why we should under- study why it should be actually observed uh, using a naked eye also if it is possible or to, in the process of exploring such celestial neighbors or traveler we will learn a lot about mathematics about science and really the mesmerizing beauty of our ever evolving cosmos universe so that's and the fun. beauty yes. and potential and really on behalf of regional science center bhopal a unit of national council of science museum and our and our also on behalf of our team students and everyone from here we are thankful to both of you for coming all the way uh, you uh, online and taking our questions and talking about the comet and hopefully this can be very inspiring for many other students who are going to watch even post live sessions so thank you so, so we much we love being here so thanks for inviting us and thanks for having us over yes. uh, we you. hope to talk to your uh, oh. to your students again yeah in the next celestial event which comes yeah yeah up. yeah and in fact as uh, dr margarita has uh, brought out a very interesting book so we will try to uh, use the mathematical analogy in our innovation hub for a workshop definitely ma'am that's very interesting uh, composition <laughs> uh, yes dr mohan on different subjects related to astronomy and astrophysics only we'll catch you later um, absolutely yeah. this note signing off anything else any, you. anything you would like to share before signing off uh if you are in bhopal there are lots of places to learn about astronomy there is the science center itself there's the aryabhatta foundation uh you know there are astronomers in aisar bhopal there's a huge astronomy uh, uh meeting coming up in indoor next month so so go visit these places meet people get involved and 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 learn to look at the sky and keep looking up so thank you keep looking up let's keep look. looking up look yes. look at the night sky thank you so much have a great evening good night from here thank you so much thank you, thank you thank you so thank you thank you thank you bye Yes sir